on Sunday, some of you were with us, we honored a number of remarkable individuals with Global Citizen Awards. But one of them, our friend, Grasha Michelle, was not able to attend the dinner on Sunday night. Uh, but uh, she's here with us today to receive this recognition. Now, for those of you who don't know Grasha, she is a passionate advocate for women and children, a champion of peace and reconciliation, and the founder of the Grasha Michelle Trust and Foundation for Community Development. She has also played a historic role in two African nations, Mozambique and South Africa. Bill Chelsea and I are very fortunate to call her a friend and to have had the opportunity to spend time with her and uh, her late husband, Nelson Mandela. Uh, the last time we saw each other was celebrating Madiba's extraordinary life and legacy. Um, but what I like to remember is uh, the way Madiba's face would light up when he saw Grasha uh, come into a room or even heard her voice. On one visit to South Africa as Secretary of State, she walked me through the Nelson Mandela Foundation Center of Memory and Dialogue, uh, where she showed me uh, Madiba's prison diaries and letters, uh, and where we were able to talk about his life and the life they shared, the love they shared, uh, which was always so palpable whenever any of us were uh, with them. Now, I think it's fair to say uh, Madiba had very good judgment. Um, and in Grasha, he found a partner worthy of his own unconquerable soul. A school teacher turned freedom fighter, she served for nearly 15 years as Mozambique's Minister of Education. Uh, she was also a partner to her first husband, uh, President Samora Machal, in his long quest for peace and freedom. Under Grasha's leadership, primary school enrollment increased in Mozambique from just 40% in 1975 to more than 90% of boys and 75% of girls by 1989. She worked tirelessly to help her country's children recover from a long civil war through social integration and education. And on behalf of the United Nations, she led a landmark study of the impact of armed conflict on children. Uh, some of you remember last year we had uh, Bishop Taban from South Sudan. Uh, it's such a hopeful moment in that new country's history. Uh, and they had, he and his wife, uh, Grace, they had with them a baby that had been found abandoned in the forest and given to them to raise. Uh, but the impact of armed conflict on children is uh, so horrific. And Grasha has done the study that uh, demonstrates why this needs to be a concern. She's continued her work through her Foundation for Community Development, which supports civil society and promotes uh, social and economic justice in Mozambique. Now, when you see her, you won't believe this, but she is also a member of the Elders, uh, an independent group of uh, global leaders who work together for peace and human rights and from the great, uh, for the great uh, uh, issue of ending child marriage. Um, this is a personal privilege for Bill and Chelsea uh, and me. When Grasha lost her first husband, Madiba wrote to her offering condolences, and she replied, from within your vast prison you brought a ray of light in my hour of darkness. Well, my friend, for bringing a ray of light to so many other lives and for your many contributions to peace and progress. It is our honor to present you with this Global Citizen Award for Civil Society.
We're going to have a special treat now uh, to uh, spend just a few minutes uh, with Grasha talking about uh, what she has done, is doing, and really hear your perspectives on the challenges and opportunities that you see uh, in Africa. But the floor is yours, my friend. You may say whatever you choose. Well, first, let me say how overwhelmed I am really to receive this recognition, which uh, it's hard to describe what uh, I feel, and what, particularly because it comes from the three of you, and uh, how you have been so important in Madiba's life and in my own life, and coming for the first time to the United States Maybe I should take on an opportunity also to thank every single one in this room who took the travel and the time to pray for Madiba, to wish him well when we had the long hospitalization. And when he passed on, we received overwhelming support as family, as South Africa, as a nation. So this is opportunity also to say to American people, Thank you, thank you so, 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 so much. But about um, Africa and the work we are doing, let me begin by one of the things which uh, recently I decided to start. At the height of the financial crisis, I was watching everywhere, everybody talking about restructuring the financial system, revisiting what had gone wrong, and there were lots of re, 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 revisiting. And I said to myself, but we are the voices of African women in all this. I couldn't see neither their voices in their faces. So I called a group of young people who are in the financial sector. I said, look, Momentous of crisis are also momentous of opportunity. Take the stage, participate in this debate of reformulating the financial sector, particularly focusing on Africa. And we started, out of that, we started one of now really powerful networks of African women in finance. And uh, we held already three summits in which we had ministers of finances, with CEOs of the biggest financial uh, banks, I mean, financial institutions on the continent. We have a huge support from the African Development Bank. But we engage women who are in financial institutions who need to be encouraged to grow to take leadership positions in these institutions. So, one of the things which we have we succeeded to do is that this network, which is called the New Faces, New Voices in the financial sector, has become a reference, not only on the continent. We have relationship with global institutions. And Hillary, as a Secretary of State, you invited New Faces, New Voices to come and join exactly the efforts you are making to, for inclusive financial assets to women and your care for women in general. So this is a, one of the things which we're trying to do. It's not only to change the landscape, it's to influence the thinking within the financial institutions to bring more opportunities of assets to finance for women. Not only to have a bank account, many of you may not know that there are millions of women who do not have even a bank account, but it's not for them to have a bank account. We want them to become investors, of course, to grow their business as entrepreneurs. And I'm very proud that this is something which is really working, and we have very much in common on that. Well, it's also, one of those issues that uh, is really at the heart of development. You know, we talk a lot about health and education and how critical that is, but access to credit, being able to uh, start a business, grow a business, uh, is at the real core of whether or not girls and women are going to have economic opportunities. So you are, you are working in an area that is increasingly recognized as being critical to development. 
I also wanted to ask you, Gracia, to talk a little bit about the work of the elders, and particularly uh, the work on child marriage, but also your prior work that I referenced, your landmark study about uh, children in conflict. Because mm -hmm. although uh, Peter uh, is right that we have a more peaceful world, we still know there are many conflicts. and. Unfortunately, women and children are the victims um, more than uh, at any time in history. Mm -hmm. Well, the elders are working with countries in conflict in a very subtle way. We are not mediators, but we really encourage people to, in an informal setting, to look into the eyes of each other and recognize that they belong to the same nation. Whatever are the differences they have, the solution has always to end at the negotiation table and to understand that the most important thing is to protect the lives of their own people. And of course on this, not only is it diplomatic to do the work, but it's also humanitarian work. We do influence very much to make sure that wherever are the circumstances of conflict, at least people should have access to the basics. My, my team, when I led the, 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 the study on Amit on conflict, we made a series of recommendations in which we said, for instance, that it's important to have food and medicines, et cetera, for people, in particular for children. But education should never fail because it gives a child a sense of normalcy, a place to be with peers, a place to have a teacher. Even where the family, for instance, has been destroyed, the, family will, the child will find a second family at the school and will find a sort of a, a parent in the teacher the child trusts. So we also infuse in this that Institutions should make sure that education never stops, even in a displaced camp or in a refugee camp. But you were asking also about uh, our work, why we decided, why the elder decided to engage with child marriage. You know, there are situations in which you can do a lot, but you have to be strategic to say, what is it which can, let me use the word of, sowing the seeds of social change. We opted on uh, child marriage because it brings the fundamental issue of within the family, how they have to value a girl the same way they value a boy. Of course, you need to give them incentives practical things which they have to do. So we talk about the importance of education to keep children in schools until they complete at least the secondary because that's when they are old enough to make a decision whether they want to get married, with whom, whether they want to have children. But the important thing that we bring also is health. To say no one, a child of 10, 12, 14, her body will be ready I mean, for marriage, and because they expected them to be children, and we indicate, for instance, there is a relationship between child marriage and maternal mortality, mm -hmm. and there is a relationship between child marriage and uh, child marriage and child mortality. So, very concrete things which families can see: what are the harms which happen to the child, but also to them as a family to encourage them to change the mindset and to allow a child, a girl child, to grow and to take opportunities. It is a long and difficult process. And for this, we work only not with the community leaders, generally speaking, but the religious leaders. Because in, at least in the, con in the context of Africa, religious institutions has a huge network they can be anywhere. And all of us, we know, everybody not only go to church, but you have the mothers' associations, you have the youth associations, and through these institutions, again, to raise the issue of protecting girls from child marriage. So we believe it's one 
It's because it's strategic in terms of building a new generation of women, but also because it changed the mindset of families to say, this child, the fact of being born a girl, has the same value as this one who has been born. As a. So it has a huge element of uh, women's equality in it. Yeah. Well, that is music to my ears. I thank you <laughs> I so know, much for I your know. your leadership and the very uh, intense campaign mm -hmm. that uh, you uh, have been helping to lead. Um, you know, as we as we finish our uh, short discussion, and as I've had the opportunity to introduce you to so many uh, people, to let them hear directly from you, uh, I would just end by. Uh, thanking you, thanking you for your grace and your courage, uh, the way that you have led uh, your life as a real testimony to caring for children, caring especially uh, for social justice and education and equity. A lot of what we talk about here at CGI is how do we uh, do more to support leaders like you, Grasha. Uh, because leaders who are there in the communities, in the countries that are moving uh, toward the future, we want to be able to give you the support you need uh, to help create the kind of future for the girls and boys of Mozambique, South Africa, and the continent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much.